Hello folks, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, God's Word has promised every generation, surely the Lord will do nothing except He reveal it to His servants, the prophets. So what has the Lord revealed to His prophets today that has actually come to pass? Stay tuned as we answer these questions and many more. Welcome back, folks. You know, history has proven the fact that true prophets heard God's voice. They foretold future events that are happening right now in our generation, right under our noses, and specifically in the United States of America. But if the populace rejected their prophecies then and there, is it possible that the modern-day populace will reject those same prophecies here and now? Prophets in Scripture were unique. In many cases, they came out of nowhere to deliver a word and were considered to be strange and unusual. But just because you're strange and unusual doesn't mean that you're a prophet. So before we look at today's prophetic viewpoints, let's look back at our very first documentary from Prophecy USA, giving us the foundations for modern day prophets. Hebrew protocol has not changed from generation to generation, and neither has the spiritual foundation changed for discerning a prophetic word as we unveil America's role in Bible prophecy. So let him who has ears hear what the Holy Spirit said then and there, and is still saying here and now in our generation. Let this quick review refresh your memory. The first recorded episode of man hearing God's voice was the biblical account of God speaking directly to Adam, telling him to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The fall of Adam brought a breach between God and man, yet God continued to speak to Adam's immediate descendants, Cain and Abel, in both blessing those who were faithful and rebuking those who had fallen into sin. According to Hebrew scripture, man's sinful nature reached such a climax that eventually God decided to destroy all mankind. However, because of the righteousness he found in one man, God spoke to Noah, who eventually built an ark, saving his family for the purpose of establishing a human race who would walk in covenant with the God who had created them. In Genesis 10, Noah's descendants became the foundational beginnings of all nations today. However, the covenant that God had given to Noah was originally designed to be carried on through his bloodline, initiated over 300 years after the flood by one man who proved to be more righteous than any other descendant of Noah. That man was the Jewish patriarch Abraham. Hebrew scripture gives Abraham the first title of prophet, utilizing the Hebrew word Nabi, which would be repeated more than 320 times in the Old Testament and continued 160 times in the New Testament Greek text. The Hebrew word Nabi or prophet is defined in three ways. First, as an inspired teacher of the will of God. Second, as one who speaks for another. And third, one who foretells the future. 400 years after Abraham's death, the offspring of Abraham's children, Isaac and Jacob, found themselves under the servanthood of slavery in Egypt fulfilling the exact word the Lord had given to Abraham. It was at this time that God raised up one of Israel's most famous prophets, Moses. After the miraculous exodus from Egypt, it was through Moses that the official inauguration of the prophet's office was showcased at Mount Horeb. It was here that for the first and only time in scripture, God spoke audibly to two million children of Israel. However, due to the people's fearful response of asking God not to speak directly to them lest we die, God officiated the office of prophet for the remainder of humanity. From that time forward, the Lord promised to raise up prophets like unto Moses and to put his words into their mouths so the prophet shall speak to the people all that I shall command him. 
In this sense, the word spoken by God was identified as the Hebrew word gala, to uncover, or the Greek word apocalyptian, to unveil, of which we get the English word revelation from. The Lord would therefore equip his prophets with a divine disclosure or spoken word as it relates to nations, future events, or personal direction. Perhaps this is why Deuteronomy 29.29 states, The secret things belong to the Lord, but the things he reveals unto us belong to us and to our children. Amos said, Surely the Lord will do nothing unless he reveal it first to his servants, the prophets. Welcome back, folks. You know, according to Scripture, there were strict guidelines for how the prophets inquired of the Lord in order to hear His voice. Those same guidelines apply to every person who claims to be a prophet today. Now, Hebrew protocol forbid the prophets as well as the children of Israel to become fortune tellers or utilizing divination, uh, being enchanters or witchers or mediums, or to be involved in necromancy, as other pagan nations did. Now, Hebrew prophets were to be only directed by God's voice to go forth and tell what the Lord had spoken. They were forth tellers and were forbidden to be hired or specifically reimbursed for the words they spoke. In other words, true prophets do it for free. Their only motivation, as Apostle Paul stated, is to work out their own salvation in fear and trembling before the God who had called them. Now, in Matthew 22... It states, many are called, but few are chosen. In the prophet's world, though many are called, most often they are reluctantly drafted into the prophetic ministry. Abram Herschel, a prominent Jewish theologian, states that prophets must have been shattered by some cataclysmic experience in order to shatter others. In other words, many times these common men were not even seeking to hear from God, but rather God manifested himself to them in such dramatic ways that it left them compelled to deliver his sure word of prophecy to their generation. They were just ordinary people like you and me who had a supernatural experience with an extraordinary God, specifically the great I am. Now more times than often, these men were sent to deliver a word that most people did not want to hear. They were not motivated by fleecing the flock, living in a lavish uh, style of living, nor climbing the corporate ladder of some religious social club. They were reluctant to go, similar to Isaiah, who thought he was not worthy, or when Moses responded to the voice within the burning bush and said, could you send Aaron, for I am slow of speech. Now, historically, the call to the prophetic ministry showcased the most anxiety from any other office in God's spiritual kingdom. Similar to Moses, all four major prophets in Hebrew texts responded with fear and trembling at their initial calling. 750 BC, an angel appeared to Isaiah who reluctantly stated, I'm a man of unclean lips. 120 years later, Jeremiah pleaded with another angel, but I'm but a youth. During the Babylonian captivity of 550 BC, Ezekiel literally fell to his face and could hardly move after the Lord had spoke to him. Now, during that same time period, the prophet Daniel stated, My spirit within me was anxious and the visions of my head alarmed me to the point that his color changed, but he kept the matter in his heart. These men knew that the task at hand was not going to be a heavenly parade. God even warned Ezekiel, The house of Israel will not hearken unto thee. For they will not hearken unto me, for all the house of Israel are impotent and hard-hearted. Even when God knew the listeners would not hear, he still sent Ezekiel so that after judgment came, believers would know that there has been a prophet among them. So God sends his prophets even when he knows the populace will not listen. Prophets are never sent to put people down, but only to set them free. Whether they want that freedom or not, the prophets are always among us. But are modern-day prophets inspired by the same motives as ancient prophets? Stay tuned. It might surprise you what the Bible says.
The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The World Economic Forum has a great reset. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their best-selling book, The Hour That Changes Everything. Together with our study guide and free app, prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, The Hour That Changes Everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today. Prophecy USA is proud to present The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. In this exciting book, you will discover where traditional theologians have missed the mark and why prophecy teachers have refused to acknowledge that America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled. When you give a donation of $35 or more, you will receive The Coming Exodus, Unveiling America's Future. Call 1-888-306-1759 or visit us online at prophecyusa.org. Welcome back, folks. You know, we just learned that many prophets were reluctant to fulfill their callings. Some were sent, like Ezekiel, being pre-warned by God when he said, Israel will not be willing to listen to you, for they're not willing to listen to me, because all of the house of Israel have a hard forehead and a stubborn heart. God knew that Israel would not listen to Ezekiel, but he sent him anyway. So if hard-headed people with stubborn hearts, rejected God's ancient prophecies then and there, it should be no surprise when our modern-day populace rejects their prophecies here and now. Now, the message or burdens of the prophets received were directed towards both nations and individuals. In many cases, due to the weight or the seriousness of the word given them, the prophets became overwhelmed. However, the success of a prophet's ministry is not based on what the people want to hear, but instead on what the Lord wants to say. In other words, prophets perform for an audience of one. So if you are called into the prophetic ministry, there might not be any standing ovations and hand clapping awaiting you. In fact, Jesus warned us, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Now, history details that prophets were called from a wide range of occupations and ages, ranging from priests like Isaiah and Zechariah, shepherds, Moses and Amos, farmers, bakers, and businessmen. Some were educated and some were not. Although they were just common among men, the prophets' initial encounters with God prepared them to release God's timely word within their generation and fulfill His purposes, which Scripture states, He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. Now, this statement of being chosen before the foundations of the world is most often evident when God told the young prophet Jeremiah in 630 B.C., before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations, Jeremiah. Now in this statement, God is revealing to us that he also knew us before we were even born. You are not a mistake. God called you forth from the foundations of the earth through the flesh and blood of your parents, even if your parents were not planning on having a baby. And God knows exactly the divine plan and purpose for your life. But the question is, do you? Do you know that purpose? Are you aware of the prophetic time clock that God has placed you in this generation, especially if you're living in America? Now, to say that America is not in the Bible is as ludicrous as saying God has no idea what is going to happen to America in the future. How can America fulfill 53 biblical descriptions spoken by the ancient prophets 
and someone teaching prophecy today deny that reality, especially if that someone is claiming to stand in the office of a prophet. Of course, stating that America is not in Scripture relieves the teacher of acknowledging that she also will be judged according to Scripture. It's not a message that's well-received, easy to deliver, and may upset your income stream from the itching ears that support you. The rejection to teach God's words put traditional teachers in a position that literally fulfills the prophetic word that they themselves deny. Babylon, you say in your heart I am and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Folks, somebody is right and somebody is wrong concerning America's role in Bible prophecy. And I don't believe it's the ancient prophets who have missed it. Within today's modern prophetic movement, before a person declares and decrees a word of faith, they really should read the word to make sure that they line up with the ancient prophets. Now, based on Jesus' description of the seven churches in Revelation, it's quite evident that Jesus' words were more focused on draining the swamp in his own church than in the capital of Babylon the Great. But we still must raise up a shout of warning against the darkness before she literally is judged by fire. Prophets are mentioned in Scripture close to 500 times. Of the 16 prophetic books in Hebrew text, 12 come from minor prophets and 4 come from major prophets. Throughout Scripture, we find three specific ways in which God communicated with His prophets through visions, through dreams, and through direct revelation. And yet, we are warned in Jude that Sodom and Gomorrah fell into error by relying on their ungodly dreams, defiling their flesh, and rejecting godly authority. Isaiah and Jeremiah prophesied that Babylon the Great would fall under the same hypnotic spell, and throughout history, God's people have perished because of lack of knowledge of His Word. So where does that bring us today in America? Who is prophesying God's Word, and who is relying on ungodly dreams and rejecting God's written authority? There is, this is a serious question, especially to those who are declaring and decreeing or denying and defying what ancient prophets have already spoken. And I ask myself the same questions every time I teach from this book. If modern day teachers and prophets are declaring America is not Babylon the Great, why can't they show you in scripture who is? The question is not who is saying these things. The question is, Whose voice are you listening to? Stay tuned, folks. You don't want to miss the conclusion of this message today. Theological seminaries have inundated churches preaching that America is not in the Bible. Prophecy teachers have regurgitated for years that America is not in the Bible. But what does the Bible say? Prophecy USA is proud to present a 30-page brochure filled with scripture debunking the biggest lie keeping the body of Christ in darkness today. America is fully detailed in Scripture over 53 times, and now we want to put God's Word directly into your hands. America's role in Bible prophecy is rapidly being fulfilled and her judgment is coming. For a gift of $15 plus shipping and handling, we will send you this amazing brochure. For a gift of $50, we will send you five brochures. For $100 or more, we will rush to you 10 brochures. And for a ministry gift of $500, we will send you both our books, The Hour That Changes Everything, and The Coming Exodus, plus 20 brochures for your friends, family, and relatives. Call today. Welcome back, folks. We've discussed God's prophets, who they were, what was their purpose, and why they came. We also learned that the official inauguration of the prophet's office was showcased at Mount Horeb, where the Lord promised to raise up prophets like unto you, Moses, and to put his words into their mouth, so the prophet shall speak to the people all that God shall command him. Now, Ephesians 6.12 tells us that we battle not with flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, and rulers of darkness. Now, these dark spirits represent thoughts, attitudes, and opinions specifically aimed at mankind that defy the Word of God. 
Those thoughts contradict everything that the Word of God says. So the goal of these spiritual entities is to keep you in the dark concerning God's prophetic Word and what He is saying in this generation. However, the Bible promises us that God not only has an army of believers who follow His Word, He also has a powerful air force. The word Malak in, in Hebrew means a messenger or angel. These messengers came with God's Word through dreams and visions, but also manifested their presence in broad daylight. Angels are referenced over 108 times in Hebrew Scripture, appearing to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Elisha, Ezekiel, Daniel, and a multitude of others. Although many artists have depicted angels as small, childlike creatures, those who have seen angels have a total different description. Before entering the Promised Land, Joshua stood with an angel before him who carried a blazing sword in his hand and identified himself as captain of the host of heaven. The New Testament references angels over 160 times. They delivered instructions to Philip, Cornelius, to Peter, and according to Scripture, their presence in the last days will be strongly manifested as prophesied in the book of Revelation. But perhaps the greatest story of an angelic visitation was when the angel Gabriel came to a 15-year-old virgin girl named Mary. The Bible says that Mary accepted the message the angel gave, and nine months later the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. But do angels deliver messages today? Would they intervene in our generation specifically if Bible prophecy were about to be fulfilled right under our nose. Would God still warn us of things to come like He promised us He would? You know, the book of Revelation states the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus Himself said in Matthew, Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets, but I came to fulfill them. Jesus came not only to fulfill the word of ancient prophecy, but He was the word of ancient prophecy, fulfilling over 300 prophecies throughout his life. But Jesus brought us something in the New Testament that revolutionized in how we could understand God's prophetic word. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Whosoever hears my voice and opens the door to his heart, I will sup with him and he with me. Now God still has prophets, but the good news is there's no man that can stand between you and your personal relationship with God. Jesus is now your prophet and high priest. If you call out directly to him, he will answer back directly to you. Now, psychologists may refer to that communication as a conscience, but the prophet called it God's still small voice. But in understanding prophecy, Timothy gave us a very important commandment. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Notice Timothy said, you study not to be approved by a seminary, a professor, a denomination, or a religious social club. Don't get me wrong, those institutions are good. But Timothy emphasized, study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of God. God speaks directly to us through this book, the Holy Bible. And based on a personal experience I had when I was 32, I can guarantee you he still releases angels to call, equip, and manifest progressive revelation knowledge in every generation. But there are many Bible teachers and prophetic voices today who gather together at seminars and conferences refuting the fact that America is in Scripture. But is what they're teaching lining up with this book? Is what they are prophesying coming to pass or falling by the wayside? Many prophecy teachers today also teach cessation theology, which basically states that Jesus is not the same yesterday, today, or forever. Jesus said, These signs will follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils, speak in tongues, and lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Now, when I was 18 years old, I made a vow to God that if He showed me He was real, I would give Him my life. The door blew open, a wind came into the room, and I began speaking in a whole new language. But cessation theologians, who were approved by man, told me this was a demonic experience. 
And again, at 32 years of age, I had another burning bush experience with the manifestation of an angel being accompanied by an audible voice, and I was told of things to come in America. I was told of the spiritual darkness that would come into our culture. The final stages of America would look like Sodom and Gomorrah, and that America's covenant with God would be invaded by the same spirits that manifested in ancient Babylon. All those events have come to pass, and we have confirmed everything I was told by this book, the Holy Bible. Now, many Bible teachers agree America is a covenant nation, and because of that, God will never judge her. But if they read this book, they would understand he will judge her because she is a covenant nation. Traditional Bible teachers who are approved by man-made university degrees maintain America is not in Scripture. Babylon might be Rome or she still is yet to be built. For them, she is this mystical place that somehow floats around the planet and nobody knows who she is. Yet no nation in the history of the world has met all 53 biblical descriptions of Babylon the Great except this great nation that we call the United States of America. Folks, perhaps it's time to read this book. It's time to discern between the wheat and the chaff, the truth and the false, the spoken word of God or the guessing word of God. When men stand before you who don't know the difference between the Holy Spirit speaking through someone and demonic possession, how on earth can they interpret the hidden mystery of prophecy? If God in the latter days was going to covenant with the richest, most powerful nation in the history of the world, don't you think he would have foretold his prophets? Well, he did. God has given you his promise that if you study his word, he will speak directly to you. And we encourage you to study our research, examine the verses for such a time as this, and let his Holy Spirit speak directly to you and unveil to you where we sit on God's prophetic time clock. So join us next week as we continue to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. My name's Rick Pearson. This is Prophecy USA, when we're reminding you Jesus Christ is alive and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. See you next week. Shalom. The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The World Economic Forum has a great reset. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, The Hour That Changes Everything. Together with our study guide and free app, prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, The Hour That Changes Everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today.